Can we get a roll call? Commissioner Andrade? Here. Commissioner Seifert? Here. Commissioner White O'Neill? Here. Commissioner Vickerson? Chair Hernandez? Here. That, we're gonna move on to the approval of the Planning Commission minutes of October 19th, if everybody's had a chance to review the minutes. I'll make that. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Can I get a second? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Now we're going to move on to the public comment period. Each member of the audience may address the commission on any subject within the commission's business. Each member of the audience and each subject is limited to discussion of three minutes or is otherwise directed. Do we have any public comment? We do have one public For an item that is not on the agenda? Is this for an item that is not on the agenda? Okay, no, this is just for comments that are not related to the agenda, okay? With that, I'm gonna move on to the consent calendar. The consent calendar is approved with one motion. These items are ready only on request of commission members. Should read, should anyone including members of the public wish to discuss or disapprove any item, it must be dropped from the blanket motion and considered as a separate item. So we do have Sierra Madre Cottages Permit Amendment at 624 East Camino Colegio. Can I get a motion to approve the consent calendar? Right. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar uh, for November 2nd, 2016. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, motion carries. With that, we're going to move on to item number two, downtown permit for the Hancock Terrace Apartments at 530 East Boone Street. Staff? Yes, uh, this item, uh, what, uh, the applicant for this item requested a continuance of uh, to, alert, uh, to November 16th, uh, and staff uh, supports that continuance and recommends that the Planning Commission uh, make a motion to continue the meeting to November 16th. Thank you. So the hearing has been opened already? Yes? No. We're suggesting not even opening the hearing oh. and, and, and just okay. doing a full continuance. All right. uh, I'll move to continue the motion to uh, this item to 1116. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> With that, we move, move on to item number three, which is the general plan flat use and zoning map amendment, tentative parcel map, and plan development permit for the residences at Depot Street, apartments at 301 North Depot Street. Can we get the public hearing opened and the staff presentation? Uh, thank you and good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, the Housing Authority of uh, Santa Barbara County is uh, requesting um, approval of a mitigated negative declaration, uh, a general plan land use map and zoning map amendment, a tentative map, a tentative parcel map, and a plan development permit to facilitate the residences at Depot Street. The residences at Depot Street is a uh, proposed um, high-density residential project, an affordable project for low and very low-income residents. Um, the project, or the subject property itself, is located, well, and there's a couple components we'll just touch on briefly. Um, uh, to accommodate the, the project, again, there would be a subdivision, a tentative parcel map that would uh, subdivide uh, 2.7 acres into uh, two parcels. The parcel one and parcel two would accommodate the project itself. Uh, the project is proposed to be developed in two phases on those two parcels. The remaining parcel three would uh, reflect an existing commercial building, um, and that, would, that use would continue. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, there would be the plan development permit. That's the site plan for the plan development permit. And again, the tentative parcel map and the plan development permit, the Planning Commission will see in a lot more detail in the future. So before us right now is the general plan land use um, zone change to change the land use designation on the property um, and the mitigated negative declaration, which we'll discuss now. Um, again, the project site itself, located um, near the northwest corner of West Main Street and uh, North Depot Street. Um, 
the project is, uh, again, the, the housing site is about 2.7 acres in size, uh, uh, generally surrounded by residential neighborhoods and some uh, industrial areas. To the north is an industrial warehouse, uh, Weatherby's uh, furniture warehouse. There's also to the north at that intersection of uh, Fessler and Depot, uh, an auto dismantling that's been there for several years. Um, just to the east are residential neighborhoods, and we'll talk about the zoning in those neighborhoods. The predominantly residential neighborhoods, and there is a lodge to the east. To the south, the little commercial store, um, a commercial, multi-tenant commercial building that we discussed. And of course, the West Main Street Commercial Corridor. And again, to the west are industrial uses, and kind of an intermixture, which we'll talk about a little bit more too, of industrial and residential uses on the west side of the project site. Um, that's just uh, a recent photo of the project site itself. Um, not much to look at at this time. There were about four industrial buildings that were removed recently. Uh, demolition permit was approved by the Community Development Department to remove some, um, we call it, underutilized industrial buildings. Again, the proposal of the site, if we were looking at our zoning, the zoning is currently CM commercial uh, manufacturing, the gray color, and we obviously the request is to change it to the high density residential, the orange color. You can see there would be some remnant industrial land in the area. And again, just to focus on the project site a little bit more, um, <clears throat> currently, and it's hard to see, uh, again, the buildings have been removed, so it's mostly just a paved site, um, kind of to the west side of that site um, is a PG&E um, utility easement with some uh, PG&E transmission lines extending through. The site has a long history. This, this entire area is part of the original city, um, so there's a lot of history in this particular area. Um, from about the 1900s to 1950, railroad tracks that extended along both sides of the property. Um, it's kind of the southerly portion uh, of the property was the location of the old um, um, railroad depot, the Santa Maria Valley, Valley Railroad Depot. And uh, based on that railroad pass, there have been a variety of industrial businesses and industrial operations on the property. Um, so again, we believe that, um, that historic uh, industrial um, use is kind of transitioning. <clears throat> so again, that's the proposal to change it from CM Commercial, and we just wanted to give you a little bit of context up from CM Commercial to, again, um, the uh, PDR3 Plan Development High Density Residential Zoning Designation. Currently, there's about nine acres total that's still uh, designated CM in the area. And we looked at it, um, we look at, you know, from a general plan perspective, the general plan recognizes the importance of both. Um, obviously, um, the residential designation, it's important to provide a variety of residential uses for, for the, our, our citizens or residents in the city. The general plan also recognizes it's important to protect and retain um, a, a certain degree of industrial land because obviously industrial land uh, generates jobs. So the question here, is it the uh, right to remove the industrial land from this particular location? And again, for a number of reasons, if we, as we've touched on, we believe it is. It's appropriate at this location, again, because since the, uh, the, the railroad went away roughly in 1985, the tracks were removed, um, the area seems to have been transitioning from um, industrial to more toward residential for a number of reasons. The industrial just appears not to have been as viable without the railroad. It's a little bit more difficult to ship, load, you know, um, um, deliver um, with 18 wheelers to this particular area. Um, it's kind of reflected in, in the uses. The uses on the property kind of transitioned away from um, uh, lumber yards and more intensive <coughs> industrial uses to kind of multi-tenant um, small industrial facilities and an outdoor storage yard. So we can see a transitioning that uh, the industrial just appeared not to be as, as viable since the, uh, the loss of the railroad in the area. Also, again, um, the residences and the, um, again, it's hard to see, but um, oh, just to the west uh, along Ben Wiley, you can see that there's houses intermixed with industrial, so the house, house. Um, so there are um, a lot of residences, not only in the broader area, the surrounding area, but very nearby that seem to um, <coughs> struggle, so to speak, to coexist with the industrial. So again, without the, uh, the, the real, the main railroad hub, it just seems like it's time to really consider the transition to the predominant use, the residential use. 
And, and again, once again, just looking at the land use designations in the area, um, the proposed high density residential is consistent with the predominant surrounding, the orange, the high density residential, and uh, the, the brown color, the medium density residential, the predominant designations. So for a couple of reasons, and, and just as another note, um, again, it would be difficult, you could uh, uh, try maybe to assemble or, or create a larger industrial uh, facility, maybe assemble those parcels, create a bigger industrial use, but again, there's one, too many parcels apparently, two, um, just the intermix of the residential would make it difficult to make a more substantial industrial operation. And three, it was tried once with a uh, facility that was a conditional use permit. I think it was called um, SA Recycling. Mm -hmm. And um, that particular industrial operation was met with a lot of strong neighborhood opposition. So again, for a number of reasons, it, it appears to be time to transition away from the uh, industrial to the residential for the reasons we mentioned that again, uh, it would just be more compatible. Uh, again, uh, in addition, we believe, and this is the conceptual site plan, I just to emphasize, once again, we're just talking about land use, this is the proposed project, but uh, in any event, I think any high density residential project could re revitalize and really improve the site, so whether it's this project or another project. However, this is um, the, the conceptual site and landscape plan, and we believe um, if this uh, was uh, completed, it would really revitalize the site. So again, for a number of reasons, staff believes at this time, uh, we uh, would support the change from CM commercial manufacturing to uh, high density residential. Um, in terms of environmental review, uh, uh, mitigated negative declaration was, <coughs> excuse me, circulated for public review, and uh, staff would be uh, recommending that the, the planning commission um, recommend the city council adopt a mitigated neg negative declaration. Um, there were a couple of environmental impacts identified in the uh, mitigated negative declaration. Uh, one was hazards, hazardous materials. That had to do with the past industrial use of the property and uh, the property would be cleaned up during construction to the protocol of the um, Santa Barbara County Health Department hazardous materials unit so the project would clean up the site. Um, noise, the noise um, issue was relatively minor. The city of uh, Santa Maria establishes a noise threshold, 60 decibels. Actually, it's an average of 60 decibels um, for outdoor noise, outdoor decks and patios. The noise coming out Depot Street would be slightly higher, uh, estimated by a noise report of about 64 decibels. So there is noise mitigation that would advise res residents that, hey, when you're enjoying your outdoor areas, the noise would slightly exceed our, our established threshold, thresholds. And finally, a traffic report identified some potential impacts. They weren't really this, um, or a significant result of the project itself. Uh, the project, uh, um, the traffic report identified that the intersection of Depot Street, Fessler Street, Railroad to the north, um, up to the, to the north there, was already operating, that intersection was already operating below the um, city of Santa Maria level of service standards. So it's already below those standards, and uh, even though the project would not generate a lot of uh, traffic itself, um, that the traffic that would be created would exacerbate that. Um, so based on um, a recent review by the Department of Public Works, part, the Department of Public Works has identified a public improvement project that's going to be implemented in the near future that should improve that corridor and that intersection. So, so with that, um, no adverse impacts would result from the project. And again, the staff would recommend uh, support for the mitigated negative declaration. So, staff's final and concluding, um, staff would recommend that the Planning Commission, by resolution, recommend that the City Council adopt the mitigated negative declaration. By resolution, recommend that the City Council approve the general plan land use map and zoning map change uh, on the property. And then by motion that uh, continue the tentative parcel map we discussed in the plan de development permit until after the City Council acts on the general plan land use change and uh, zoning map change and the mitigated negative declaration, probably December 21st. So with that, we'll conclude our presentation and we're available for questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the commission for staff? I have a couple of questions. Um, 
one of my concerns was what you had pointed out was when we take away commercial use, we're potentially reducing job growth. But you said that there are nine acres approximately still of commercial use still in the area. What is considered the area? And, and to be clear, um, Madam Chair, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, to be clear, the nine acres does include the project site in the area, as specifically is that area between Depot Street and Ben Wiley Street, that block between Maine on the south, Fessler um, on the north, and then um, Depot on the east and Ben Wiley on the west. So that, that total is about nine acres, including the project site. Which is three acres, so we take that away, we're down to six. We're down to six. Okay. But again, we don't believe in this location that would be a substantial loss. Right. Yeah. And then my other question mm -hmm. is, again, that, that intersection of Depot and Fessler is in my opinion, kind of a disaster. So if we're going to add more traffic, which this is going to create, do we have any sense of what the city's plan, I, you said that they have a plan to address that. Do, you, do we know what that is or some general idea? Uh, yes, we, we have that information and we will have that plan in detail at, at the December meeting. Uh, at this point, we didn't provide it because um, the intent was to focus just on the land use change, mm -hmm. uh, but there there is a discussion of uh, adjusting lanes and turning movements and, and control devices in order mm -hmm. to make that whole stretch operate more smoothly. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong, that project is scheduled to happen whether this, this development occurs or not. Madam Chair and Commission, yes, we have a highway safety improvement grant that we were awarded to um, do a, a road diet from um, along the entire corridor of the Fessler Depot Railroad uh, north to Alvin uh, to basically help reduce speeds and provide mm. better turning movements and level of service throughout the corridor. Okay, Thanks. great. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Seifert? No. Mr. Andrade? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, and I'm just going to follow up on that. Is there going to be a, um, a light or some other kind of traffic device installed there at the intersection of Fesler and, and Depot? Is that <coughs> under consideration? At this moment, we are not proposing any traffic signals that aren't already in existence along the corridor. Okay. And, but do we know how this, um, this new uh, modifications uh, or improvement of traffic circulation, how it's going to, is it going to slow traffic down? Is it going to speed traffic? I mean, it's an odd, it's an odd configuration um, and it's hard to know when to stop and who goes first mm -hmm. and all of those kinds of decisions at that intersection. And, and with the new, f I guess, 50 more trips, so it's going to be, um, a potentially significant impact. We have we have plans to reconfigure the intersection so that uh, both both Fessler, both north and south west Fessler, um, come to complete stops and depot becomes the through traffic mo movement. Mm. And we are reducing it to one lane in each direction with a center two way left turn lane. Oh. So that there's only one lane in each direction. There's dedicated turn pockets onto both Fesslers and uh, room for a two-way left turning down the center okay. of, of Depot. Oh, thank you. Any questions? Additional questions? No. There is a mention of the reduced parking, and I know that by law the city has limited grounds to deny a concession request, but did we get a number as to what the concession was? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, did you say a number? Did yes, you? because it doesn't mention a parking, I guess, a number. Well, for yeah, the, the, the intent is we're, we're going to go into that. We, we've got a whole lot of information we're going to provide. When we talk about the project specific, we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of the project, parking and um, design, landscaping, everything. Okay. So we do have some, some details about parking we're going to get into. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions from the commission? No? Okay. Do we have a presentation from the applicant? Is this, is this on? Okay. Yes. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the 
permission. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Lisa Plowman. I'm with RM Design Group, and I'm um, the planner representing the project for the County Housing Authority. So I wanted to just take a little bit of time to talk to you about, um, which much of you might know, about the Housing Authority and sort of what their activities have been in the county and particularly Santa Maria, and then talk to you a little bit about some of the needs that are identified in your housing element and a little bit about the project and what the objectives okay. are. So I think um, Mr. Scott did a great job of sort of laying out what the issues are with respect to the general plan amendment and the rezone. Um, I'm just going to explain to you a little bit about the Housing Authority and I, I know you're familiar with them and they've been a successful organization in the county um, now for 75 years. They're ha having their 75th anniversary. Um, but I, I just wanted to take a minute to spend some time on what the mission of the Housing Authority is. And really, it's, it's founded on the belief that um, decent, safe, and sanitary housing is central to the physical and emotional health and productivity and self-esteem of the people it serves. I'm not going to continue on reading it, but it's really their fundamental mission to make sure that there's adequate housing for everybody at every income level. And I know the city's been supportive of those efforts in the past. So as I mentioned, they've been operating for 75 years now throughout the county of Santa Barbara, um, excluding the city of Santa Barbara, which has its own city housing authority. It owns and manages 1,300 units countywide now. 333 of those are in the city of Santa Maria. And they're at Ted Zenich Gardens, Central Plaza Apartments, Rancho Hermosa, and Evans Park. Um, one of the things that we wanted to share was the Housing Authority has over 5,000 people on their waiting list, and essentially they've had to close their waiting list because of the way the tax credits work and whatnot. So there are a lot of people in our community still waiting for safe and sanitary housing, and, and, and obviously this project is another uh, attempt at providing that. So. Just to talk a little bit about the city's needs and objectives, in the needs assessment in your housing element, there's a lot of talk about overcrowding in the, in the city and that um, about 19% of all your households are overcrowded and with 14% of those being renter occupied rather than 4.9 being owner occupied. So, you know, of the five, uh, roughly over 5,000 overcrowded households, 2,000, a little over 2,000 are severely overcrowded. So getting more housing on the ground and more stock available will help alleviate some of those concerns, particularly with respect to the lower income levels that we're trying to meet with this project. Here are the, some of the goals that, um, and objectives and policies that the city has with respect to the development of affordable housing and encouraging infill, and I think this project would um, help a, the city achieve these. So I thought um, Bill also did a great job of just pointing out what the surrounding uses. This also identifies, and I'm not sure if this will point or will work. Mm, not really, no. <laughs> so I won't go into great detail about this, but it does show sort of where the residential and industrial uses are around the property. Um, project objectives. So really this project's objective and the Housing Authority's objective with it is to meet the very low and low income categories um, in our community. We want to house veterans, people with special needs, the lower income families, and, and people coming out of homelessness. So there'll be a mix of population on the site. The project would also provide on-site support services through their community partners, and those include mental health services, computer labs, cooking classes, financial literacy, sort of the, the standard services that they provide to their residents to help them become successful in moving into these new homes. We, all of the residents will be 60% or below the area median income. So those are the low and very low uh, income residents. So I'm just going to walk quickly through the design so you just get an idea of what we're looking at. But again, we'll go into much greater detail when we come back in December after the council has had an opportunity to look at the general plan amendment rezone. But as you know, the site's just, just under three acres. Um, and this is just an aerial perspective. Gives you an idea of how it looks. 
um, in the neighborhood. This is the site plan, and which shows the building placement, and then of course the yellowish green is where we would have landscaping. It's broken into two buildings right now, each with 40 units. And this gives you a street perspective. The idea, the architecture firm, uh, Eris Studios, worked on it, and they wanted to try and bring sort of a, some of the history to the building um, and sort of have um, recall to the past of the um, industrial uses and, as well as the railroad depot. Uh, this project will have, actually have some um, a museum room, if you will, that will have photos and whatnot that would honor the history of the site in this area of the city. That gives you a view of what the courtyard area where we would have barbecues and tot lots and whatnot. Is that the view from Depot? No. This is the view from Depot. Oh, okay. This is the view from the west side of the side. project. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Where the open space is. And then just gives you, I'm going to just some quick elevations of each building. And then those are the rear elevations where you'd have the courtyard uh, on the west side. So tonight, um, the Housing Authority is here to ask you to support staff's recommendation and approve um, or recommend approval to the Council of the General Plan amend Amendment and Rezone and recommend adoption of the mitigated ne negative declaration. Uh, John Polanski, Larry Dees, and myself are available to answer any questions you might have. Thank, Thank you. you. Do we have any questions from the Commission for the applicant? No? Okay. We do. Thank you so much. Thank you. We do have a written communication. We received a letter that um, staff has provided to each of the commissioners. And we also have three people. So if we can, can get. Can I ask? Yes. yes if, if I may, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, is this letter identified with anybody's name on it? It's, I did not find it. It looks name. like it got cut off. No, I think it's just a PS. It, 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 ha it has no, it, it had no name or, or property identification. So it's just an anonymous letter? Yes. Um, and the person didn't contact us to identify himself or herself? No. No. Uh, uh, Thank you. It does speak to the issue of, of traffic and circulation in the area. And when we come back with the PD permit and we talk about the improvements that are already planned in the area uh, and the issues of parking and traffic, that, uh, these concerns will at least be uh, part of the staff report and the public hearing at the next meeting. I'm just concerned with this writing when someone um, starts out a letter saying no one in their right mind, so, and then does not put their name to that, and I'm just concerned about those kinds of statements being made. So I was just trying to clarify that. Thank you. Okay. We, can we get Robert Gutierrez to come to the podium? Madam Chair, can you announce that the, the protocol is to yes, do I will, a slip? Yes, I will, once he gets us up. So um, the public comment is limited to three minutes for each speaker. So I just wanted to give everybody notice of that. Thank you. If you can state your name and address. Okay, Robert Gutierrez, 914 West Apricot, apartment 102. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for this opportunity to comment on something I really believe in. My name is Robert Gutierrez, and I am a resident of Lompoc. I think that housing on Depot Street would be great for the community of Santa Maria. I am a prior resident of home base on G, which houses adults with no independence living with a mental illness. This has been a great help for us, the city of Lompoc. Prior to home base on G, I have been chronically homeless for three years upon graduating during the recession of 2008. The inability to find employment in addition to living with depression and anxiety contributed to my becoming homeless. I became extremely ill while being homeless because I didn't have access to medication and was limited on what I can have in the shelters. I felt like less than a person being homeless because I felt like I had <clears throat> failed in my life. I wanted to be better than that and didn't know how. Luckily, I got into the mental health system through the Transitional Age Youth Program and learned skills to deal with my anxiety and depression. 
In August of 2013, I was blessed with the job working for Transitions Mental Health Association and got my first apartment on home base on G. Thanks to my job and supportive services I was receiving, it was a huge life changer for me. In 2014, I shared my story at the last shelter I resided at and I was given the opportunity for another job working for the Central Coast Collaborative on Homelessness, or C3H for short. Today, I am still working for Transitions Mental Health Association and continuing my role as an advocate with C3H as a peer navigator, helping individuals struggling with mental illness and homelessness. According to the data collected in 2015 by C3H and Common Grounds from the, um, the homeless community, um, as many as 64% of those surveyed in Santa Barbara County self-reported with a mental illness and 48% self-reported a severe mental illness. As a formerly homeless individual who has given a fighting chance through affordable housing and as an advocate for those without a voice, I am asking that you approve rezoning of land proposed for housing on Depot Street. This property needs to be rezoned from commercial industrial to residential to offer the um, support and hope to individuals in our backyard who are experiencing homelessness and mental illness. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. We can have Jill Smiley. If you can please state your name and address. Jill Smiley. 814 David Road. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. I'm a member of this community. I work for Transitions Mental Health. I'm a taxpayer, voter, and I am the mother of a child living with mental illness. I see there is a big need to get our most vulnerable off the streets. The proposed Depot Street housing project will be invaluable to solving this problem. Rancho Hermosa has tackled the issue of homeless families. We need more adequate housing for single adults with no dependents. There is no question that housing people saves thousands of dollars in tax money. Currently, according to our Santa Maria police, 60% of their calls from the community concern our homeless population. The city's homeless problem now exceeds the gang issues. Please consider changing the zoning from industrial to residential so the housing on Depot Street project can move forward and give more people the opportunity to be housed. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if we can get Vice Chair Charles Huffings. You can state your full name and address for the record, please. My name is uh, Charles Huffines. Huffines. I'm, uh, I live in uh, 117 West Tunnel Street, Santa Maria. The members of the Santa Maria Planning Commission. My name is Charles Huffines. I am Vice Chairman of the Santa Barbara County Mental Health Commission, representing this, the 5th District. I have come to you on two other occasions concerning both homelessness and mental health issues. Once involved uh, your passage when Alice Cleghorn, the director of mental health for Santa Barbara County and her assistant, uh, you all approved the uh, crisis stabilization unit, which is on Agnes Street on a positive vote. Secondly, you, um, I was here to talk to you about the uh, extending the five years for um, the old Lazy Days Hotel that everybody in town knows <laughs> to uh, in favor of their expanding everything and changing the area and the whole nine yards, which again, you uh, we're in favor of. Now I ask you to go in favor 
and a positive vote for the redesign of uh, rezoning um, the property on Depot Street from commercial to residential. This project has all the necessities to help those that need the most help. And besides, what we needed at Lazy Days is available here, which is. There are resources available on the premises that will eliminate the police department having to come in and the ambulance and everything else. I thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you so much. Does the applicant have a closing statement that they'd like to make? No? Okay. Do we have any other? Thank you and good evening, Madam Chair and members of the Commission. My name is John Polanski. I'm Director of Housing Development with the Housing Authority of the County of Santa Barbara. I just wanted to Can introduce our, our team here. And that's Larry Deese, who's project manager. We're here primarily to answer any questions that, that you have. Your staff did an excellent job. We really enjoy working with the uh, City of San Maria staff. And we're just here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the commissioners? No? OK. No? With that, I am going to add yes. something. Uh, just an, an informational item. Um, if the commission chooses to um, adopt the resolutions in the package, I uh, would request that the uh, one word be added to the resolution on mitigated ND, and that is um, that on the last whereas, um, the word guidelines be added to the end it be added after the word sequa. Um, so this should be the first sheet after the after the vicinity map. Right. And on the second page, uh, the last whereas says sequa section and then it has a number and we would like if you act on this to amend it to say sequa guideline. Oh. Oh. And then and then everything else. <laughs> Okay, anything else? With that, I'm gonna be closing the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Do we have any comments that the commissioner would like to make? Sure. Mr. Seifert? Yeah, I, I, I agree with this project. Uh, there's a big need in this town for, the, uh, for this type of housing. Uh, worked on other committees with these uh, people and I think this is a, a good project for us. Uh, I would like a chance to look at the, uh, maybe have a study session as far as the elevations, colors, uh, the, the industrial look of the building. We're, we're going to have a chance to look at that, correct, before the PD permit? Uh, we, there will be a hearing on it, but uh, we weren't scheduling us uh, to have, have a study session to talk about it. I believe we had one. I'm just wondering if maybe that was a study session that 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 we you did. missed could be I missed one recently. Yes. But if 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 uh, you would like an overview of the architectural drawings, we can look that out. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, there was a few things there I'd like to comment on, and other than that, I like the project. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, and I agree. I think it's a perfect use for the site. I think we all agree that that site is not utilized and is an eyesore and housing is great housing authority has a great reputation for doing good projects um, but I do think the traffic issue is going to be an issue so we are going to have some more concrete information about how that's going to be resolved in the, at the December meeting is that right yes that is correct okay great thank you uh, Mr. Andrade in, yeah in my view I think it's um in my right mind, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's a good project. Um, there are, the, the letter writer who did submit the, the number of issues did did raise you know concerns about children walking to school and all those kinds of things. So I think the focus, at least my focus, would in the in the in the future project or uh, with regard to the uh, plan development permit will be about what kind of safety issues, safety concerns we need to make sure we deal with 
And so I, I think it's a good project. I think the, I think the city, uh, by uh, approving this, uh, helps meet its um, housing element requirements that we're always getting dinged on. And so I think this is a good project and, um, and I'm hopeful to see it get it off, off the ground. Thank you. I think it's a great project. We do uh, see that housing gets more expensive on the Central Coast. It's a big concern for you know every resident of the city of Santa Maria. So I think it's great that we're bringing for low-income housing, you know, into this area. And for those reasons, I think it's a good project. With that, can I get a motion for the resolution? There's going to be two resolutions and one motion. <laughs> okay, I would like to uh, recommend that by resolution, uh, the Planning one. Commission recommends that the City Council adopt a mitigated negative declaration, declaration number 2702. With the modification. And could staff that request that you base the modification, that one word modification? The CEQA <laughs> to guidelines, not yeah. section. I'll second that motion. Can we get a roll call? Commissioner Seifert? Aye. Commissioner Andrade? Aye. Commissioner White O'Neill? Aye. Chair Hernandez? Aye. Number two. I would, uh, by resolution, recommend that the City Council approve a general plan land use map amendment and zone change GPZ 2016 001. I'll second that motion. Roll call. Commissioner Seifert? Aye. Commissioner Andrade? Aye. Commissioner White O'Neill? Aye. Chair Hernandez? Aye. So resolutions are adopted. And the third one is a motion. I would like to make a motion to continue the tentative parcel map, number TR2016-002, and plan development permit, PD2016-003, to the, our December 21st, 2016 meeting. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Aye. And motion carries. Thank you. With that, we're going to move. Congratulations. With that, we're going to move on to. That. Thank you. Thank you. Item Thank number you four work. report on City Council actions. Uh, the City Council did have a hearing last night, but there were no actions that uh, are relevant to, to the Planning Commission's work. Okay. Number five do we have any oral reports from the Planning Commission and staff? Um, yes, uh, Madam Chair, I was uh, I attended the City Council meeting last night, and there was a um, uh, they did honor our last uh, yes. City Planning oh, Commissioner Gail Pratt, and uh, they gave her a nice plaque. Uh, uh, it was it was a very nice little thing, and we also inducted a new member to the CDBG board. Oh wow, uh, that's night, great, uh, James Thomas, okay. local local okay. resident. So okay. yeah, it was a good meeting. Great. Any other oral reports? Okay, with I, that. I, one thing, just want to make sure everyone is aware that there's no study session tomorrow. Yes. Uh, and that um, November 16th, uh, it does look like it will be a, 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 a full agenda. We have five public hearing items. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I know, right? <laughs> with that, I will adjourn the meeting. Lives. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>